So good afternoon. So I started this channel because I recently purchased a new SLS 3D printer. Now this is the uh, MK1 Innova SLS printer, which was uh, developed by Thomas Starek out of Czechoslovakia. And it is an open source SLS printer. So he is pretty much, uh, you know, it was his desire to build one of these. And he finally went and uh, built a prototype and got it to work and then he made some changes and upgrades until he finally came out with a production ready printer and he decided that he was going to make this open source uh, and so the first ones he did was make uh, kits and included all the parts uh, for about seven thousand dollars US dollars to and then he would ship it and then you're responsible for building it all yourself and then he provides all the documentation and support uh, as you go along. So I was actually, this was something that was a very interest to me, SLS uh, 3D printing has always been uh, something I've uh, always thought that would be uh, interesting, but it's not really a hobbyist um, type of 3D printing because basically the lowest end, I would call commercially available uh, compact SLS printers are probably start around $14,000 and, and, and then quickly go up from there. So his option was a full kit for approximately 7,000 US. So uh, for about half the price of a Sinterit Lisa, one of the competitors, you could uh, build your own. So I purchased one and uh, in July of 2024, and by the time it shipped and everything, it arrived uh, near the end of November and now I'm going to share my journey of building that printer with you. So let's take a look at some the specifications first of all compare it to the competition let's say. And I basically I've defined that there's two competitors the uh, Formlabs Fuse 1 and then the Sintera Lisa. So let's take a look at those comparisons. I put a chart together and pulled some of the uh, data uh, provided from everybody uh, so you can see the differences between these. All right, so here's a comparison of the units I was telling us. So I've listed the features here on the left and the Innova, Formlabs, and Sinterit. So the build volume, uh, now I listed two build volumes for the Innova MK1 because uh, it lists the total build volume, but it makes a note that the actual effective build volume, because you need some room on the edges, um, as you build through this. So he gives about a, a 20 mil uh, relief, basically an inch around all sides and, and bottom uh, to, for that to make up the effective. I don't know if the Formlabs and Sinterit are also, uh, if those are the total volume or the actual effective build volume, but you can see the Formlabs, uh, if you compare the effective build volume, it's slightly larger and deeper than the Innova, so a little advantage there. And then the Sinterra at least, uh, obviously, uh, it's, it's got similar in one direction in the depth, but um, it's not as uh, tall and it's not as uh, wide in, in one of the directions. So I would say in this case, uh, Form Labs, the Fuse 1 gets the advantage here, Nova is second, Sinterra at least is third. Uh, which will kind of be a theme here. Uh, the layer thickness, uh, surprisingly, it says that the Innova says 100 microns, Formlabs is 110 and 175 for Sinterit, so the advantage with Innova there. Print speed here, you can see um, it says 9 millimeters an hour for the Innova, 10 millimeters uh, for the Formlabs, and then much, much less for the Sinterit at 3 millimeters an hour. So obviously the advantage here to Fuse 1 and Nova's next, and then Sinterra Lisa. The scanning speed, you can see the scanning speed of the Formlab Fuse 1, it's twice as much as the Innova. I couldn't find that data for the Sinterra Lisa. Now, they do differ in the lasers that they use. Um, the Innova uses just a 10 watt diode laser, so that's the wavelength of 450, whereas the Fuse 1 uses the fiber laser, it's also 10 watt. And then the Sinterra Lisa uses a, a, a dialed laser. It's five watt, different um, wavelength there as well. 
The laser spot size, uh, once again, the formless fuse is the spot size is a little bit smaller than Nova, and then uh, Centerit is you know, almost twice as much as the Nova. Printer control, not nothing significant here. Uh, size of the touch screen, you know, depending on what you like, but obviously uh, the Centerit's got the smallest screen. Connectivity wise, uh, you know, the Nova and the Fuse are equal here. The Centerit doesn't offer Ethernet. And then obviously the price. So you can see I listed here on the Nova. Now he'll send out the full kit for $7,000, and then uh, you have to fully assemble that yourself. But it has everything in it. The Form Labs Fuse, it says it starts at $19,000. And it can go up as high as 20, depending on the add-ons there. And then the Centerit uh, was listed as 14,000. So that is kind of a comparison. Uh, one thing I will tell you on the Innova, that if you don't want to buy the full kit, um, Thomas offers where he'll provide all the kind of the key electronics, optics, linear techniques, and heating elements. And then if you uh, do it yourself or you want to go get your, you have a shop and you can. Uh, CNC laser, do whatever with the aluminum parts and HPL, make your own 3D printers and, and then purchase your own fasteners wires, then you can do that. And like I said, uh, this is an open source documentation. Thomas has done a good job of listing all the sources and, and uh, the actual the exact uh, dimensions and 3D CAD model for his printer. So this is, uh, this is a great comparison. So as you go along and really want to determine you know, if you want to spend, you know, almost three times as much to get the Fuse 1, um, what are you getting for it? Well, maybe a little bit more saving time on prints overall, but as far as uh, overall quality, it's, uh, you know, we'll see. So my plan on these videos, there'll probably be four or five of them in the series during the build, uh, since it's broken up into several different parts is to walk you through those so all the way from receiving the product uh, to me unpackaging it to then actually starting the build so that's uh, that's the plan and hopefully that goes well so the first thing I want to do is just kind of show you uh, Thomas's website uh, for the documentation and where you go for the assembly instructions because uh, they're actually quite amazing. So I'll take you to that page and walk you through that. And then we'll kind of, what we'll do is, is when I do the videos, I'll probably do part of my actual build so you can see um, some of the challenges. I'll talk through at the end of each section uh, what I found. And I will tell you that Thomas was outstanding. That after I got through each build section, I would actually tell him, hey, this is what I had difficulty with. I think this needs to be uh, labeled different here's this part was wrongly labeled and he corrected it literally the next day and so because the manual is online and it's a uh, it's a such a working document it's just amazing that it can be uh, literally updated uh, as soon as uh, you identify an issue which prevents uh, having old documentation in your hands from the very start so let's take you to that page just walk you through it and then we'll get into the day uh, the package arrives so we'll head over here to the uh, slsforall.com and it takes you up in the screen so obviously if you uh, you can read about the kit or the do it itself like I explained earlier and uh, just kind of shows you the history of what he's done as well in the blog and section. So let's just go to documentation, uh, drop down here to the assembly manual and it takes you to this page here and you literally right here in the beginning you just say start your build. And it takes you to this, this uh, program. I guess he combines it with the, his uh, CAD software along with uh, Cadasio is the name of the company that, that, that combines this and makes it very interactive. So to start, it can only be done on a desktop computer, laptop computer. It will not work on an iPad. I thought I was going to do that in my beginning of my build, and, and um, I forgot that I could not do that. So. Uh, this is the page that takes you on the assembly instructions and you go right to start your build. And you can download the license agreement if you want or you just move forward here. And then you have to confirm that you've read. I've done all this already, but we'll just do that. 
All right, so the, here you get to the build section. So you can jump to any one of these build sections you want. Um, and to start your build, obviously, we want to go to uh, one. So this is how each section starts. Now, it is, I noticed uh, the first four are, are similar. They list the key part, the table, the quantity, and then each part is uh, listed here. You've got a, a diagram. You can rotate this around, which is very, very important as you do this build. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got the right orientation, you've got uh, the right part, everything like that. Uh, when I initially uh, started my build, these didn't line up right, and uh, like I said, Thomas was able to fix that right off the bat. So this is just a good way to kind of get your parts together uh, before you start the build. I found that very helpful. And then uh, if you move on to the next one, then it really begins the process. And you can see here, it identifies the part, the next part, and then um, it'll tell you the hardware to use here. And you'll see very quickly, and it gives you little notes. These are important. Read the notes uh, because obviously this one, you don't put anything here in this step. Um, and you've got the Loctite that you use for all these. So we'll go through this as I, as I do it as well. But I just wanted to show you just the interactivity of this, of this assembly instructions is just freaking amazing. And uh, I, you know, more companies should do this. Uh, I did, there are some little glitches here and there, but obviously this is something you'll figure out as you go along. It just, it's just amazing. And I was very impressed. And you'll find sometimes, I did find sometimes, you really have to look close and uh, make sure you have the right part. Uh, there may be an extra couple holes somewhere on one that look exactly the same except for a difference in holes. And, and, uh, and I'll tell you where I found that. And same thing here too, you know, these are not, uh, these holes are further away from that top than these are. And so, you know, everything's important. And I always say in, in my videos, just take your time and read ahead. I would literally go through this build of this chamber up to this first part before you even start anything. So it gives you a good sense and feel of what you're doing. So let's, uh, I'll stop there, but that's where you start with the assembly instructions. Well, let's uh, check in to see how this thing arrived uh, when it was shipped. And obviously it ships from Czech Republic and I live here in Louisville, Kentucky. So it um, air freighted over and then uh, arrived. Looks like uh, the package finally came. well packed, well labeled, so a quick inspection, no damage on the cover. This one sits on a nice uh, plastic pallet as well, so it's all right. Well, it's going to be an uh, unpacking day today. So this is the um, user's manual, instruction manual that comes with the ANOVA complete kit. Uh, looks like it's laid out pretty well. It's a nice introduction page and the just gives some safety handling instructions, how to calibrate the machine, uh, how to prepare and get ready, cleaning the parts, pretty thorough. Um, talking about checking all the mirrors and checking the halogen heaters here. And then just uh, talks about prepping for the first print. And also kind of doing a, uh, what it calls a dry print job. So it describes how to do that. And talks through uh, how to clean the powder we use. And clean it completely to switch to another powder. And then the maintenance, it looks like there's a, the software tracks when things need to be uh, replaced or cleaned. So overall pretty good. And then it has a list of all the um, parts, uh, at least, uh, looks like most of the uh, fasteners I guess. And here it's got the uh, wiring documentation here on within each bundle and uh, then the license agreement. So overall pretty thorough uh, instruction book and uh, and then of course the uh, assembly instructions are uh, online. Okay so we're gonna get started on the uh, SLS for all open source laser printer. This is the ANOVA MK1. So this open source SLS 3D printer uh, was designed and developed by uh, Thomas Stark out of uh, the Czech Republic. 
Uh, I will tell you though, the way this was packed and arrived in a box, I'd say it has a little bit of Russian in them because uh, it was like Tetris. Everything fit really nice, uh, well packaged. In fact, uh, he did a very good job on uh, you know, all the individual aluminum parts uh, are wrapped. Uh, and then each individual uh, part is labeled in a box. That's the main issue here. Uh, it's got a box just with all the fasteners here. And uh, just, yeah, just you can see um, behind me, I've got additional parts, HPL parts back over here. So I've got everything positioned on the table here. It even came with uh, tools. So some, um, looks like some little uh, millimeter uh, type uh, socket wrench screwdrivers. Uh, we got some sockets here, I some pliers, uh, just additional. So he supplies all the tools uh, for the assembly. Uh, obviously, if you have your own, uh, you can go with that. Um, came with uh, some safety uh, laser protective goggles. So uh, pretty excited about this, uh, this build. Uh, I'm here at my company. We're MKS Global. Uh, we're a full engineering product development company. Uh, we, I'm here at our fabrication facility where we do a significant number of uh, metal cutting, welding, assembly operations. Uh, so uh, I bought the full kit. So this uh, come, there's three ways that you can build uh, this open source printer. One, uh, you can buy the complete kit, which is what I bought uh, this time around. I see how everything was uh, done. So um, everything on this table and behind me is for a complete build. So that's one way he sells it. He found that a lot of people wanted to cut and do their own and source uh, a lot of their own metal uh, parts and components. So he now sells just the parts uh, like the electronics, uh, the stepper motors, or those sort of items, uh, the guts, I would say, uh, versus the frame and the, and the uh, metal pieces. And he sells that as a separate configuration. And then the other configuration uh, is basically just the true open source concept where you have to source and buy uh, everything yourself. And I think you end up having to buy a couple of the uh, electronic boards uh, from Thomas himself, which you can find uh, online uh, at his website. So that's gonna be, uh, we're gonna do this in parts as we go along. Uh, the other thing too is what's really nice is uh, here the assembly instructions are actually uh, online. And so I have my iPad here. And so it's video, it, is, um, it was obviously a well, well thought out through. So these assembly instructions, you can, there's a PDF version, but obviously the video will give a lot more detail uh, and ability to kind of see what's going on and how things fit together. So I, I well thought out. I will tell, uh, you know, uh, Thomas put a lot of thought into this, uh, very impressive, uh, especially the packaging. Um, you don't see that very often. And uh, even the, the, the part that came in, it's sitting on a plastic pallet. Uh, there was slight uh, opening in the box, but because it was packed with a styrofoam and support, uh, there was no damage to anything inside. Um, so overall, uh, well thought out. And so I'm excited uh, to get started here and uh, kind of show you along. And then and then finally, we'll, you know, once we get it all put together, we'll uh, get it fired up and start seeing if we uh, can actually make some parts off of this thing. Um, so uh, if you thought, it, if you don't have the ability uh, to make your own metal parts, if you want to just buy the electronics, um, you know, our company has the ability to uh, make all these parts as well. So uh, on my website is uh, here, if that's something that you're interested in sourcing uh, the parts locally from the U.S. as opposed to buying a complete kit from the Czech Republic. All right, so uh, let's get started here.